In the world of virtualization, there are two forms of hypervisors. There are type 1 hypervisors and type 2 hypervisors. So let's compare and contrast these, and I'll also provide you examples of each. Some examples of type 1 hypervisors, which we just talked about, are Microsoft Hyper-V, VMware ESXi, and a new one, which is a Linux-based hypervisor called KVM. Now, what makes these hypervisors type 1 hypervisors is that they're loaded directly on the physical server hardware, as I talked about in the examples previously in this module. So in other words, instead of loading, let's say, the Windows Server 2012 operating system on a physical server and then running your applications inside, with the case of a Type 1 hypervisor, you would load the hypervisor on the physical server, run virtual machines on top, and then run, let's say, Windows Server 2012 inside and enable applications like Microsoft Exchange or IIS Web Services. So that's a Type 1 hypervisor, again, loaded directly on the physical server, just like an operating system would be. Then there are Type 2 hypervisors. And what differentiates these is that you would load these inside of an existing operating system that's already loaded on the hardware. For example, I've got my laptop here that I'm actually recording this video training on, and it's running the Mac OS X operating system. It's a MacBook computer. On top of that, if I wanted to use server virtualization, I would load a Type 2 hypervisor, and the one that I'm actually using is VMware's Fusion product. So I could load Fusion. It looks just like any other application. Then from there, I would create virtual machines. And so I could create, let's say, a Windows Server 2012 virtual machine, a Windows 8 virtual machine, an Ubuntu Linux virtual machine, a SUSE Linux virtual machine, and even like a Microsoft DOS 6.22 virtual machine if I wanted to, all running on top of my existing MacBook computer. There's also Parallels that's available for the Mac. And then for i86 computers, like your Windows laptop or your Linux desktop computer, you would load either VMware Workstation or Oracle VM, previously known as Sun VirtualBox. All of these listed are common and very powerful Type 2 hypervisors that don't require you to replace your existing operating system and are designed to run on desktop and laptop hardware commonly used by IT professionals today. So you could use these virtualization hypervisors on your existing computer and you'll get many of the same benefits. And then you could even exchange virtual machines that you create with type one hypervisors running in the data center, or you could download virtual machines created from those type one hypervisors into your type two hypervisor and run, let's say your company's web server downloaded from the data center on your local laptop, assuming you had the resources to run it. Now let's look at a graphic that compares type one versus type two hypervisors. Again, with a Type 1 or native bare metal hypervisor, as it's sometimes called, these Type 1 hypervisors are loaded directly on the physical server hardware. And then you create virtual machines, which contain guest operating systems and applications on top of the hypervisor at the highest level. Now compare that to the Type 2 hypervisor, which is also called a hosted hypervisor. What's it hosted by? It's hosted by an operating system. For example, in my case, Mac OS X, in your case, it could be Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows XP, whatever it is you're running on your computer, you would then run the hosted Type 2 hypervisor on top of, just like any other application. Then from there, you could run multiple virtual machines, each with their own very different guest operating system. So that's the difference between Type 1 and Type 2 hypervisors. And I'll tell you, the Type 1 hypervisors are commonly used in the data center, because they have direct access to the physical server hardware and they can get you the best performance. Whereas the Type 2 hypervisors are commonly used on desktop or laptop computers belonging to IT professionals or even students, let's say, that have a Mac laptop but they need to run a Windows application. Or maybe they have a Linux laptop but they need to run Windows applications. However, the downside to Type 2 hypervisors is that they're not going to give you quite as good a performance as the Type 1 hypervisors, and that's because you have this extra layer of software, which is the operating system running on your existing laptop. Still, each one of these has their place in life. They're both extremely useful, and it's just important to know the difference between Type 1 and Type 2 hypervisors and where they can best be used.